Have you ever wanted to join a club, but there's been really specific rules like smart trousers only, or no trainers, or yeah, you can come, but you can't bring your mate Dylan? <laughs> Nani? Well, 11 Plus creators took this idea and they thought to themselves, hmm, how can we make this more boring? And they turned it into this. <laughs> Most are like questions are where you're given two figures on the left and you've got to pick one of the figures from the right that is most alike them. Or in other words, the two figures on the left are in a club and you've got to figure out the rules to be in that club and pick the best candidate from the right. So to solve these types of questions, we're asking ourselves one question. How do we get into this club? What rules can we come up with that determine what is important about being in the club, given the similarities, and also what doesn't seem to matter at all? What's not important, given the differences of the two figures? Let's jump into this question, shall we? So given the two figures here, I can already see that it's really important that the lines that are involved here are straight. So we need straight lines. I can also tell that it doesn't really matter, it's not so important what type of line they are, whether it's dotted, a normal line, a solid line, whatever. The line itself doesn't seem to matter. But there's one third rule that is clearly important here. It's clearly important, given the two figures similarities, that we have exactly three lines. So with those set of rules, we can now eliminate some of these options and find the best candidate. So I'm going to get rid of A, because A doesn't fit our rule of having only three lines. B, however, does fit our rule of ha having only three lines, and we've got some different lines here as well. So B looks okay at the moment. How about C? C doesn't fit our first rule of having straight lines, so not a great candidate. Can you see what's wrong with D? Exactly the same as A. Doesn't make sense. Now, E is really interesting because it brings me to another rule that I didn't see when I was starting the question. And that's okay to go back and forth in these questions. E made me realize that actually it does seem to matter that the lines are parallel, okay? They are not just going at all different angles, they are parallel. So actually, for that reason, E is not a great candidate, which brings me back to B. B is my best candidate because it fits all of my rules and it also fits all of the things that don't matter. For example, yeah, it's got two dotted lines, but well, this one's got two solid lines. This one doesn't have two of anything. That doesn't seem to matter. B is my best answer. Let's take a look at another question. Before we go on to question two, if you're enjoying this explanation, then you should definitely check out our Kent Test tutoring sessions on our website. Check the availability of our groups and simply get in touch to book a free trial today. Okay, on to question two. Have a look at those two figures on the left and ask yourselves the question. How do we get into this club? What is the rule and also what doesn't seem to matter? Have a look yourself. So I can already see that it's going to be something to do with the number of sides. I've noticed that this is an eight sided shape. And if you count across the size of this one, we've got eight sides here as well. But what doesn't seem to matter is what the shape actually looks like. We've got a regular octagon on the right and an irregular octagon on the left. Now, other than that, I can't seem to see any other rules. Even when I scan across the five figures on the right, just like in the last question, nothing else jumps out at me. So let's go through and simply count the sides. So the best way to count sides is to mark off the sides you've counted so that you don't accidentally count them again, like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, when I got to nine, I could have stopped because it was already higher than eight. So this is not the answer. I can already see that B is a hexagon, but just to check, one, two, three, four, five, six is not B. What about C? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This does seem to fit. So this is my best answer right now. But if I wasn't 100% sure that there weren't any other rules about this club, I would check the other ones too. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Nope. One, two, three, four, five, six. Nope. So C is my best answer and we can move on. Right then, let's take a look at question number three. Can we make up a set of rules to get into this club looking at the similarities and differences? Have a go yourself. Let's think about this. So looking at the similarities, I noticed that they're both made of a square, two little triangles, and three dots. So quite clearly, they are my rules of joining. But it doesn't seem to matter where the dots are, how rotated the square is, and also where the little triangles are. So the positions don't really seem to matter at all, but the amount of elements does. So let's check, can we go through and find one that matches two triangles, three dots, one square? Three dots, but three triangles, nope. Just one triangle, nope. Two triangles, but two dots, nope. This one doesn't even have a triangle in the middle, it's got two squares, so completely wrong. We're hoping now E is the answer. One square, 
Two triangles, three dots. That is exactly the rules that we come up with for being in this club. E, you may join the club. So guys, it really is as simple as that. Now that you know you simply have to make a set of rules of things that matter and things that don't matter, can you work out how to get into this club? Let us know your answer in the comments below and make sure to subscribe for plenty more 11 plus videos coming your way.